Okay, so according to this video and some viral TikTok clips I've seen, um, the American school system has finally gone nuclear. And I could not be more happy. Because ever since I was a kid, nothing made me happier than learning. Oh, hi, Jack. I have a cat named Jack. Um, but at the same time, I hated nothing more than I hated school. Which is a paradox. Unless you know what the American school system is like. So anyways, I feel validated and like my opponent has finally been defeated. However, I feel bad for the kids still stuck in the school system who are basically still being tortured like I was, except now they're not even learning, not even a little bit, which makes me angry. Um, yeah, and when I was in middle school and high school, everyone kept telling me how smart I was, but no, I wasn't. You guys were stupid. I'm average. Anyways, um, I hope that doesn't offend too many people because the people I went to school with are probably, like, adult stoners who work at an Amazon fulfillment center by now, so they probably don't even care and won't see this, but, yeah, you guys were idiots, sorry. Um, anyways, um, the thing that scares me most is that apparently teachers aren't even teaching kids how to do basic arithmetic, so that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna make basic arithmetic super easy, and I'm gonna try not to be too patronizing. All right, let's go. Also, if you hear people talking in the background, that's just my mom, uh, learning remote viewing. Uh, I have nothing to do with that, but I'm proud of her. She really likes that kind of stuff, and I think that's kind of cool. Um, all right. I, I have no comment on whether or not it's valid, but, I mean, let people do what they want to do as long as they're not hurting anybody, am I right? Okay, let's go. Um, let's see. All right, first we're going to go to my gallery. Okay, so, you guys, you're in luck, because... When I tried to learn multiplication a long time ago, I couldn't. Because the numbers just came out of nowhere. This looks complicated, but I promise I'll walk you through it. Um, these tables, the outlines are really thick because I had ChatGPT help me make them real quick. They're going to come in handy. The addition table is just... Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Right, so you guys probably have this, like misunderstanding that mathematicians think a lot and that they're really smart they're not mathematicians like shortcuts mathematicians are like the oh right cheat codes don't exist anymore oh hi hello that's my cat um mathematicians have um like uh, they hack the game, so they're they're actually playing on easy mode. They just like know everything. Well, well, they don't. They don't know anything. I'll show you what I mean. Like this, this is an answer key. This tells you what you need to know, so you don't even have to think at all. You just have to look. And so the idea that you have to think and be smart to do math is a myth meant to make people who like math feel cool. You're not cool, guys. You're just playing with numbers. But I'll show you all how to play with numbers also, because it's I like playing with numbers. So let's go. Um, the first thing you guys need to learn is addition. So this is what addition is shaped like. I will do that in a minute. This is our addition table. It has all the answers we will ever need. We'll be coming back to this. Let's teach you all basic addition. I know this feels patronizing, and you probably already know basic addition because it's counting. And everyone knows how to count, but if you don't know how to count, that's fine, because I'm here to teach you. Alright, so I gotta go to it. It's right here. Alright, this is our friend, the addition table. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Alright, so five digits it is. 
Now, so that you don't feel like maybe I already know the answer, we're going to use this random number generator that goes from 1 to the biggest five-digit number in existence. And then generate that twice. Okay, so our first number is 20310, or 20310. And I'm just going to draw that in. It's real easy. I'm I'm basically finger painting right now because this app is on a touch screen and I don't have like a little touch screen pen. Let's make the pen a little stronger and a little smaller. All right. So what did I say it was? 20310. All right. Let's draw that in. Oh, 20. Oh, that looks like garbage. 20, 31, 0. And then let's get another one. 62, 62, 1. That's kind of a fun number. All right. 62. Oh, I bet. Let's make it even smaller. Okay. 62. 60, 2, 1. Alright. Okay, now I could do this in my head, but I'm not, because I promised you guys that you don't have to think, and I'm going to prove that to you guys. Alright, so the first stack is 0 plus 1. So we find 0, which is up here, and we find... 1, which is right here, and we just go, where does 1 and 0 kiss? They kiss right here. 1 plus 0 is 1. And that probably feels super patronizing, but, I mean, I told you I wouldn't do it in my head, so we put a 1 there. Well, legally we should put it here, but it doesn't matter in this one case, that's why it's shaped funny. Good kitten, Jack. All right, now, one plus two. I know that's three, but like I said, we don't need to think, so let's not think. We have two, we go to one, one, we find where two and one kiss, that is three, so now we put a three right here. Okay, now, 3 plus 6, I know that's 9, but like I said, I am going to prove that you don't have to think at all. So, 3 and 6, where do 3 and 6 kiss? That would be 9. Okay, so it's 9. Then we go back down here, and we go to 9. And the reason you guys need to know how to do this with drawings is because even though we have calculators and stuff technically if like the bad guys with like the guns wanted to like destroy all of your phones they could uh, i won't tell you how but basically there's a way to like just make all the good stuff just stop working and hopefully nobody ever does that, because I really like computers and stuff. But, um, there's a way, and if anybody ever does that, um, and you guys want to build things in order to protect yourselves, you might need to do calculations. Because, um, you know, to make, like, the parts fit together and stuff. I don't know. And you don't need to know either yet, until suddenly you realize that you need to figure out how to build a trebuchet, which is like a, a catapult, in order to throw rocks at, uh, I don't know, army men from another country who are trying to take your last box of Cheez-Its or whatever. I don't know. I don't know, but math comes in handy. So, let's see. Zero plus two. I hope you guys can trust me now that it is in the table. I'm just going to say it's 2 because we all know it's 2. 
Uh, 2 plus 6 is 8. But again, like, I hope you're trusting me that it's in the table, so you can go back and find where I got this 8 later if you don't trust me. Alright, and we're in luck, because we didn't have to carry any numbers. That's nice. So now we just drop this here. And that... Oops, that 8 looks like garbage. And that is the answer. 82,931. However, I do want to show you guys what happens when you do have to carry. So now I'm going to use a number that I already know will need it. So now I am using a number where you guys can't trust where I got this number, but it's to show you how the thing works. So I hope you can forgive me. Okay. These are just a bunch of nines. Just a whole bunch of nines. Because that's just the easiest use case I can think of that uses all of the parts of the machine that I've built. It's a drawing, but it's also a machine. Okay, I hope you can trust me when I say 9 plus 9 is 18. Carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 plus 9 is 19. But we don't need to worry about that yet. 9 plus 9 is 18. Carry the 1. 9 plus 9 is 18. Yes, I'm going to repeat it just like that a bunch of times. Sorry, guys. Alright, let's just speed up a little. Oh, no, an ad. I clicked an ad. Sorry, this is a free app. It's just my favorite app. Alright. Alright, I think we're... Oh, wait. I forgot to carry the 1. All right, guys. Okay, here's the fun stuff. Now we do 1 plus 8. That's 9. We do that a whole bunch of times because it happens a whole bunch of times. And then... Is that it? I guess I designed this with a little extra than it needed to have. Okay, well, I mean, redundancy never hurt anyone. Mm. So, 1 plus 8 is 9, and then 1 plus nothing is 1. So, the final answer. So, guys, this circle here, I should have put it over here. Uh... But like I said, I'm not smart. I'm average. The people who call me smart are just stupid. But we'll fix that. Okay, so the answer to 99,999 plus itself is 199,998. Okay, and we can go back. That's how to do addition. Now, let's learn how to do... Something slightly harder than addition, but still pretty easy. Subtraction. So here's the thing about subtraction. You only need to know half the table. Because when a large number gets minus from a small number... So when a large number loses a small number, it is equal to an answer, but when a small number gets minus from a big number, it's the same answer, you just put a minus in front of it. It's a negative. That might be confusing, so let me give an example. 5 minus 3 is 2. Just trust me on this. Well, actually, I'll show you. 5 
minus 3 is 2. Now, oh no, what I do? I clicked something. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, it is 2. But 3 minus 5 is also 2, but negative. And how that works is you just count backwards. So 5, 4, 3, 2. Okay, so 5 counting backwards once is 4. 5 counting backwards twice is 3. 5 counting backwards thrice or 3 times is 2. You get it. 5 minus 3 is 2. And then um, 3 minus 5 is 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 minus 1 is 1. I mean, no. 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 minus 3 is 0. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 3 minus 5 is 2. Negative 2. So, ironically, they're the same answer. It's just you put negative in front of it. Hope that makes it easier for you guys. Um, Alright, so let's do some subtraction. And that's why it doesn't really matter. Just know that if you... Like, depending on how you look at this, just pretend the answer is negative. That's all you need to worry about. And I had ChatGPT help me make them, so that's why they're kind of ugly. Um, let's see. Alright, this is the subtraction one. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. Now... To make it not confusing, I encourage people to put the big one on top. But just know that it actually does not matter. When you're done, all you need to do is just turn it negative if you wanted to do the opposite. It's not complicated. Okay, so... How many number spaces do we have here? It looks like for the top one, we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And for the bottom one, we just have 5. So let's go 6, 1 to 6. Um, that's 987,159. So 987,159. And let's go draw that in now. Oh, my memory is real bad. 987159. Yep, and let's get another one that's between one digit and five digits. Okay, 45,379. Nice. 45,379. Come on. 379. Is that what it was? Yep. Right on the money. Okay. Alright. So, we go to our subtraction table. And we do 9 minus... Oh, wait, 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 I forgot, my bad. It's, you do it backwards. So, 9 minus nothing, we don't have to worry about that. 8 minus 4, well, we don't have to, that answer is 4. So, we can put a 4 down. I think. It's been a while since I've done this. If I'm wrong, I will fix it. Seven minus five. That's three. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm so sorry. Eight minus four is four. 
and then 7 minus 5 is 2. And then, uh oh, 1 minus 3. We can't do that. Because, like, with the big, with the whole number, you're allowed to just say 1 minus 3, that's negative 2. But when the 1 is inside of a big number, so, like, if this 1 and 3 were on their own, it would be negative 2. But because this 1 and 3 are part of larger numbers that are doing opposite, if that makes sense, uh, we've got to get tricky. But not too tricky. It'll be easy, trust me. So, we've got to find a way to turn this 1 into a 10. So that it's not as complicated. And the way to do that is to go here and just say, I'm sorry, number two, but um, you're actually a number one now. And then to come here. And now this is a 10. And then 10 minus 3 is 7. This is a 7. And then 5 minus 7, we've got to do it again. So you've got to turn this 5 into a 15. So we come over here and we say, sorry, 7, you're actually a 6. And then we come over here and we say 15 minus 7, that's 8. Then we go over here and we say 9 minus 9, that's 0. Then we look at the topmost, finalmost numbers here. And we just plop them into the answers. So that's 0. And then this is 8. And then, oops. And then this is 6. And then this is 1. And then this is 4. And then, if there's nothing there, we pretend it's a zero. So 9 minus 0 is 9 minus nothing, which is 9. And the final answer is 941,680. We'll just double check that real quick. Let's see. The original numbers were 9, 8, 7, 1, 5, 9. Correct? I believe so. Oh wait, hold on. I have noticed an error. Um, actually, instead of turning this into a 10, we would have turned it into an 11. Which is normal. It's okay to make mistakes, especially when you're not super smart. But let's, uh, let's get rid of everything because we made a mistake, and go back to the part where we made the mistake. This is why it's actually cool that I built this, because normal math involves erasing, so even if you show your work, you wind up kind of not knowing where it went wrong sometimes. But with this, you can actually, like, do detective work on yourself and pretty quickly find out where you went wrong. See how quickly that was? All right. So, oh, oops. I'm not supposed to erase the bottom number. I'm just supposed to erase the parts where I changed stuff. All right. Cool. Cool. Now we're back in business. This doesn't become 10. It becomes 11. And then we put an 11 here. Then we go here. 5 minus 7 doesn't exist. We need 15. 15 minus 7. So, we've got to turn this 
into 10. And then, yep, we're still moving. Okay. And then, now it's 15. Now we're cooking with fire, because now we go 9 minus 9 is 0. 15 minus 7 is 8. 11 minus 3? No. 10 minus 3 is 7. 7 minus 5? I just have a two. Okay, I need to do more detective work real quick. Oh, I see what happened here. I see what happened here. It's a quick fix. Seven minus five is two. I accidentally put the answer there, but the answers don't go here. The Boro products go here. Small mistake. I mean, I designed this years ago, so... Naturally, I would be a bit confused. Okay, so it did borrow from this, but it didn't borrow from 2, which is the answer. It borrowed from 7, which is the big number. Okay. Just 6. Okay, now we're cooking with fire again. Alright, so 6 minus 5 is 1. 8 minus 4 is 4. 9 minus nothing is 9. Alright, now let's check our answer. See, I made a mistake, but it was easy to find the mistake because of this tool I invented. 941, I mean, 941,780. Okay, I can type this in on the calculator to double check it. Um, the big number is 987159. I'll go to my calculator app and just type in 987159. My memory is bad, so I'm going to double check that. 987159, yep. And then minus 45379. And then minus 45379. 45379. And then it says the answer is 941780. Is that what we got? 941 seven eight zero yes this method i taught you scans it is workable uh feel free to slow down the video and watch it a few times there is a subtraction table remember so you don't need a calculator you just need to chat gpt is stupid i know that as humans we like to have the big number on the left and the little number on the bottom but because ChatGPT isn't human, it doesn't have that kind of preference, so it put the big number on the bottom and the little number on the left. But basically, you go here to the big number, and then you find where it kisses the little number on this, and then that gives you your answer. Alright, we're about a half hour in, guys. Um, let's see, now I'm going to teach you the next hardest thing, which is multiplication. The hardest math problem is division. I hate division, but I'm still going to teach you how to do it. All right. <clears throat> this looks complicated. It's not. Trust me, it's not. So, there's four of these boxes. That's A times B plus plus some of tallies, and the boxes are just where we put the number. So we can have a we can multiply two four-digit numbers. So let's go here. No, not here. Here. Let's make this a four-digit and let's go. Alright, two eight four zero. Let's draw that in. All right, two, eight, four, zero. And then let's go here and get another one. Eight, five, 11. All 
and then let's go. Oh, right, right. I need to show you that there's a multiplication table. So anything times zero is zero. Okay. Let me get my multiplication table out here. Yeah, you see zero. If it kisses any number, it's zero. The thing about the multiplication table is that it's symmetric, so technically you only need half of it. But we have the full thing. Um, another thing is, anytime 9 kisses a number, just um, subtract that number from 9. And then add the difference to the top. So, here's what I'm saying. Um, 3, 9 minus 3... My bad. Never mind. No, it goes... So 9 counts down the larger the digit it's added to. So by the time 9 gets to um, itself, there's only one left. But the place in the tens place counts up. So pretend there's a 0 in front of this 9. So 9 to 1 is 0, 9. 9 to 2 is 1, 8. 9 to 3 is 2, 7. You see, so the number on the left counts up, starting from 0, and the number on the right start counts down, starting from 9. It's a nice little trick. There's lots of nice little tricks. Mathematicians hate thinking, so they come up with all sorts of little tricks. It's really cool. Um, anyways, so you can use this, but I'm just going to eyeball it from my memory, because that's easier and faster. Um, once you get it down. It's obviously not easier if you don't know what you're doing, but once you do it enough times, you're like, oh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Okay, so 8 times 4, that is 8 times 2 plus itself. So 16 plus 16 is 6 plus 6, which is 12. And then 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3, so it's 32. And then 8 times 8 is a headache, so I'm going to use the cheat sheet. 8 kissing 8 is 64. Eight times two is just sixteen. And then we do the same thing for five. Well, actually, for all of these, since it's zero, we don't even need to think because we're mathematicians now. We can be idiots, like idiot mathematicians. And an idiot mathematician would just be the laziest thing they could possibly be. And the laziest thing you could possibly do is just guess the answer is going to stay the same the whole time because it probably is for anything that kisses zero. All right. And then a trick with fives is you just cut the number in half. So half of four is two. Oh, you cut the number in half and you multiply by 10. So half of four is two. Multiply by 10, it's 20. You get it? So this is also super easy for me because I know the idiot mathematician trick. Well, they're not idiots, they're lazy. But I mean, when your brain is lazy, we call that being stupid. So, I mean, I guess, yeah, mathematicians are stupid. Um, 40, but being stupid is fun, like, I love doing math, so I'm not, like, insulting them, I'm just saying their egos are a bit big, um, and then half of 2 is 1 times 10, 10. All right. And then these are super easy because it's 1. It's almost as easy as 0. You just copy the number that it kisses. So, that's 4. That's 8. That's 2. That's 4 again. Uh, oh, right, I don't need to think.
We're adding this zero because it will help us later. But technically, if you want to be a better mathematician, you can just leave it blank and then remember that it's supposed to be a zero. I'm just doing this because I want to dot my T's and cro cross my T's and dot my I's for now. All right. And then you might be wondering what happens next. Well, next, we just pretend the numbers are on a water slide. Look, this is real fun. It changes from multiplication to addition now, though. So we're using different rules when we get into the circles. So zero plus zero. When zero kisses zero on an addition table, it's still just zero. But remember, the water slide part is addition. Zero plus zero. That's why the arrows are here, because it, it would get confusing without the arrows. Again with the zeros. <laughs> Holy heck, this is going to be the easiest water slide. Okay, now 8 plus 0 is 8. Now 8 plus 0 again. Now 8 plus 2 is 10. Uh-oh, what do we do when we carry? Well, that's what the other thing is for. That's where the one goes. Anyways, back to business. Zero plus nothing is zero. Nice. And where do the numbers we carried go? They follow their little pipe. We'll get to them when we get to them. Multiplication is hard, not because it's actually hard, but simply because it's a lot. Don't worry, though. This is what it actually looks like, and if you make a mistake, it's my special type of invention that lets you find exactly where the mistake happened. Unlike regular math, where you kind of erase and scratch things out and then get confused later, this crazy-looking math lets you see exactly where it went wrong. All right. This is 1 plus 0, which, I mean, well, actually, no, it's just 0 straight down, so that's 0. And then um, 0 to 0, 4 to 0, 4 to nothing. But we don't mess with it yet because we might need to carry later. You see the pipe? Although we probably won't need to carry later. It's a possibility, so we, we leave it until we're all done. Now, I haven't done this in a while, so there might be another goof up, but the great thing about this is when there's a goof up, it becomes painfully obvious and really easy to fix. All right, next step. Zero to zero. Zero to four. Deja vu, am I right? 4 to 0. 8 to 4 is 12, so... Alright, that's the thing. Sometimes you need to carry more than once. So these actually are not ones. These are tally marks. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, wait, I reminded myself. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, self. All right, um, I think that's that. Where were we? Um, yeah, 12, and then we just drop the 2 down the chute. And then we go up to the next water slide. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 plus 0 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 0 is 6. 6 goes in the chute. And then we move on to the next one. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 4 is 11. 
I forgot. We're carrying the one. Right. Carrying the one. Okay. It's going... It's going this way. So. Add another tally mark. That's not an 11. That's a 2 in tally marks. For those of you who would never learned tally marks... Which, I mean, it's possible, so I'm not patronizing you. Tally marks look like this, and then once you get to five, you go like this. And then you just keep going. And then when you want to know how many it is, you just count the lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six. Because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Very simple stuff, but hey, I'm not judging if you never learned it. All right, um, okay, so then we take one and we add it to zero, that's one. And then we take one and we add it to zero, that's one. And then it goes down the chute. Okay, then we do the next one. Six plus six, that's twelve, carry the one. Two plus one, that's three. And then it goes down the chute. Okay. And then... And then we just do one in the chute. And then now we do the cool stuff. So we follow this pipe. Here. And that's one tally mark, so we count it and it's one. Then we follow this pipe which goes here and that's three tally marks so we count it and it's three all right let me go back down here we say the answer is zero then we go back down here we say the answer is four then we go back down here we say the answer is two then we go back down here and say the answer is zero then we go back down here, we say the answer is 6. Then we go back down here, we say the answer is 1. Then we go back down here, we say the answer is 4. Then we go back down here, we say the answer is 4 again. So, if I did everything correctly, and I might not have, so we don't know if this is the answer yet. The answer to 2... 840 times 8511 should be so you kind of you read it funny the biggest number is here and then you kind of go into the corner and then you kind of go down so I'll read it to you so the answer to these two numbers multiplied by each other should be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 um 4 Hundred forty one thousand. Wait, hold on. Oh, I'm doing math. Okay. Well, obviously, I'm doing math, but I mean, I'm doing. I'm figuring out how to say it out loud. So that's a group of three right here. And that's a group of three right there. So it's forty four million. 160,240. Let's see if that's what it is. 2840. We're checking with the calculator. 2840 times 8511. Yeah, it's 24,171,2400. Or 240, is that what we got? 240, 160,000? Nope, nope, we made a mistake. We made a mistake. So our 240 is correct, but somewhere after that we went wrong because it diverges after that. So we're on the right track, but we went wrong. Um, 44,160. It says 24,170. 
So if you subtract 1 from some of those numbers and move them around, it becomes the right one, meaning I carried wrong. So I'm going to pause the video and figure out what went wrong, and then I'll explain it to you guys. Okay, so I've redistributed our tallies to get the right answer, so I suspect I carried wrong. Let's figure out exactly when and where. Alright, so the first time we carry is when 8 plus 4 is 12. Oh, I see what went wrong. Okay, so when you carry, you climb up the water slide back to where you started, and then you shift. So the next time we carry should be 8 plus 2 equaling 10. So we climb up the water slide back to 8, and then we shift. Alright, but anyways, now we get the right answer, because now nothing plus 0 is 0. Wait, hold on. This is going that way. Oh no, it should be 1 plus 0 is 1. And then this is going that way. 1 plus 6 is 7. I want to make sure I follow the right pipe. It does get a bit dyslexic. Yep, okay. And then... 1 plus 3 is 4. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So, now our answer reads... 24,171,200. Let's see if that's what the answer is supposed to be. 24,171,000? Okay, and 240. So, yes, that is how you multiply. Feel free to watch this twice. I, I hate it when um, video lecturers make mistakes on screen because if you're following along, you have to also erase the mistakes. So I hope you weren't following along. But these mistakes do demonstrate how easy it is to, like, correct your mistakes. Because you can see everything because of this invention. Even though it's confusing looking, it's useful. Alright, and the last one is my least favorite. It is... Division. Division actually doesn't use its own table. It uses subtraction and addition. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so... And we get the division out. Images. Downloads, I think. Division. Alright. Okay, breathe. I gotta breathe. Oh, this is complicated stuff. I'm stretching. Whew. Okay, let's see here. That's addition, that's subtraction, that's a counting space, and that's the number of counts. Oy. Okay, oh, I see. Yeah, division's even more complicated than multiplication, so now we can only divide two two-digit numbers. Trust me, it can be expanded. It gets real ugly to look at real quick. Okay. Three. That's kind of funny. All right. Let's do drawing zero three. I hope you guys know about non whole numbers. Uh, basically, just like you can count up to infinity, you can count down to something that's, like, microscopic. So, like, one, let's say that the number one, just normal one, is a, uh, a fish tank. But then, let's say you cut the fish tank in half. 
Well, now if you want to change all of the numbers in existence, you can say that the number 1 is equal to 2 half fish tanks. And you can just say that a half fish tank is 1 and a fish tank is 2. That's easy, but it's a lot of, I mean, that's, that that's difficult, but it allows you to keep using the same types of numbers. But that's not how it works in the real world. In the real world, when you cut your fish tank in half, you, each half fish tank, is now 0 0.5 of a fish tank. And 1 is just the 10 of 0 0.5. You get it? So... So let me give you a little scratch paper example. This is one. It's one. It's boring. You want to cut that in half? You can't. This, oh, sorry, that's a six. This is 1.0. You want to cut that in half? Sure. 0 0.5. 5 plus 5 is 10. 1 is 10. It's confusing. Don't worry about it, but that's how division works. All right. Then let's get our other random number. I'm saying that because if the, the big number is actually this small, we're going to wind up with a number that's microscopic, which means less than one. Or definitely at least not integers. Integers is fancy talk for easy numbers that don't have a point zero in them. It's just fancy talk for easy numbers. All right, five, nine. All right, okay, I don't want to do this, but we're going to do this. Let me go back to my key. It's been a while since I invented this. Like, literally, there's going to be a point where we turn it all sideways. Like, I'm not joking. It's crazy. Alright, so that's an addition table, which is great. Um, but first we have to do the subtraction. Okay, let me see. Addition... Subtraction, counting space. So this is where you put tallies. Number of counts. Answer? Where is that answer? Okay, so we do answer last. <sighs> this looks crazy. That's addition, and that means we go here, and we do subtraction first. And then we do addition again to get the next counting space. No, wait, yeah, because these are going here. This is walking here. Okay. Okay. Who was I on when I made this? Okay, we're just gonna save this for now. And I'm going to pause the video and look for my documentation on this. Cat. Monster dolphin. Whew, okay, I found it. Let's see what the heck I did here. Alright, 33 divided by 7. We did 33... Oh, 33 divided by 77. Okay, how, how did we do this? Okay. Very confusing. Where did I start? I, there was definitely a method to this madness at one point. And look, it got the right answer. Okay. 
Let's see. Let's just look for 33 and 77. 77 occurs twice. Oh, hey, come back. Okay. Okay, let's see. Whew. Okay, okay, breathe. It looks like there isn't lines connecting this 33 and that 77. But the 33 is the big number, and that helps us. It looks like... Oh, the zero. Is it coming or going from the... It's going from the big circle. Okay. So that zero is added to the four. Where did the four come from? Okay, so two winds up on top. Where does the two happen? I promise I will make this make sense. Everything hurts. My brain is exploding. If I can just find the two. Okay, so this is a zero two. Oh, this is where the four. The four happens here. Okay. Okay, we're on to something. And the zero... doesn't happen anywhere? Wait, oh! So the two... It's backwards! The two is on top. The four is in the middle. And the zero is on the bottom. Okay, so the order is reversed and upside down. That's why it's crazy. Okay, so we're going to start here. How did we get two? 77 and 54. 77, 66. Like I said, I hate division. It is crazy complicated. But this is a predeterministic way to get it. Oh, I'm counting. I'm using addition. I see what's going on here. 77 plus 77, I think, is 154. Let me, let me check that. Yeah, 154. Okay, we're back in business, almost. Um, where is 77 coming? Oh my god, I found it. I found the answer. What is 77 of 3, right? No. What is the closest 77 gets to 222, I think, was the challenge. And then in this next one, we said, what is the closest 77 gets to 330? Okay, so 77 out of 222. 77 out of 330. Alright, all right. I'm learning, but I still haven't decrypted for 3.30, or... Oh! Oh, right, when a number is smaller than a big number, you shift it forward and add zero. Okay. And then you have to subtract a little bit. Alright, I need to go use the restroom. I'm gonna pause the video. When I get back, I 
think I've almost deciphered this nonsense. Okay, I get it now. Um, so we're doing 33 divided by 77 in this example. So what we do is we s try to count how many times is 77 going to fit into starting here. How many times is 77 going to fit into 33? My answer was zero. Obviously. It's too big to fit into 33. That's... It's too big. So, then what we do is we multiply 33 by 10, which doesn't require thinking. Remember, I said mathematicians hate thinking. So what we do is we just put a zero on 33, and then it's done. Um, like, we move it over like this. And what that actually is, is we're making 77 smaller. But we don't need to worry about that yet. Because it's the same thing. Just make 33 bigger. Then we take that down. And we do this column. 333. 308 is blank for now. Because then what we do is how many times does 77 go into 330? 330. And then we count in 77, which is like counting by 2, but a little bit bigger. So when you count by 2, you go 2, 4, 6, 8. When you count by 77, you do 77 plus 77, then that plus 77. Like, it's going to be hard to do in your head, but basically you go 77, 154, 231, 308. And then obviously, if we add 77 to 308... It's going to be way too big. So we stop at 308. We put 308 here. And then I think what we do is... I'm not sure. One sec. Okay, I think I see what's going on. 3 minus 3 minus 3 is 0. And then... 3 minus 0 is 3. And then... 0 minus 8 can't happen. So we go back to 3, and we take 1 from it, turning it into 2. And then... We turn the 0 into a 10. Right here. And then... Hold on. Oh, I see. I forgot there's a twist right... Oh, sorry. I forgot there's a twist right here, meaning everything's opposite. So when... Uh, sorry, it's Facebook. The zero from the first try wound up on the bottom. The four from the second try wound up in the middle. And then the two from the third try wound up on the top. All right, now let's see. How did we get the remainder? 330 minus 308. Let me try that. One twenty-two. All right, let's try to see if there's a one twenty-two anywhere in here. Uh, right. mm. I don't know for a fact I verified this at the time. Let's just do thirty-three divided by seventy-seven to make sure that I. 0 0.428, so it should round up to 3, but this is truncation. We don't know what the next one's gonna be. So, 0 0.42 is correct if you truncate, but if you round, it should be 0 0.43. Like I said, it's truncation. Because of, like, precision nonsense. Anyways, so, 
Uh, I know that I knew how to do this because I got the correct answer. Let's see. Okay, so 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 minus 8 doesn't exist, so we borrow from the 3 to make that 2, and this 10. This 10 right here was the wrong drawing. It should be a 2. That makes this 0, 22. 0, 22, 0. Just like this was 0, 33. 0, 33, 0. 0, 22, 0. So... How many times does 77 go into 220? Zero. Twice. And it's 154. So, 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 minus 5 doesn't exist. So, Then we go back up here, and this is a 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And now this is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. What is 0 minus 4? It doesn't exist. So, 7 becomes a 6, and it's now 10 minus 4. 10 minus 4 is also 6, and that's why we wind up with 66. Oh my goodness, sorry, it's Facebook. 66, how many times does 7 go into that? Well, it doesn't. So, we take a break, and then... That's the end. We got our 2, because it went in twice, and we got our 4. And then we remember the twist, making it backwards, 0, 4, 2, 0 0.42. Now, that I think I understand what's going on, let's go to this version. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is going to be confusing. I'm so sorry. I hate division, so I'm not the one to do this for y'all. Let's see. First of all, let's see if it's even worth attempting. 3 divided by 59. 0 0.05. Okay, so the very, very last one is going to yield a 5. Okay. Whew. <clears throat> Let's do it. Zero. Oh. Wait, maybe I can make it smaller so it's just less inconvenient. Alright. Oh, wait, I clicked cancel. Interfaces, am I right? Zero, three, five, nine. Yeah, there's no way 59 is going to count up to three. So, that's. So then we go to three, I mean, zero, three, zero. How many times does 59 
go in. Oh, sorry. The answer was zero. Follow this pipe. Remember, there's a twist. Zero, zero. All right. How many times does 59 go into 30? The answer is still zero. Zero. Three, zero, zero. How many times does fifty nine go into three hundred? Is it fifty nine or fifty seven? Fifty nine. Okay. Now we might be getting somewhere. Fifty nine. That's one. And then we could use our addition table if we were going to do this completely by hand. But you've seen how slow that is, and it's only for emergencies, so I'm just going to use the calculator. 59 plus 59 plus 59 plus 59 plus 59. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equals 295. If we add another 59, it'll be more than 300. So, the answer is it goes in 5 times. But remember, we're going to show our work. So, the next one is 118. The one after that is 177. The one after that is 236. The one after that is 295. So, the answer is 295. And actually, I was wrong. 59 does not go here. 295 does. 295. And then, so that makes this make more sense. And this as well. Okay. Things are making a lot more sense to me now. Alright. So, let's see. 3 minus 2. That is 1. 0 minus 9. That means we have to carry. So that becomes 0. And then... That becomes 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. So what we do is we put 10 minus 9. 1, 1 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. Confusion. I think I'm doing this right. No promises. Uh, 
Just yes, at zero, that's one, and then this needs an answer, so it goes, and it makes this zero, and then it makes this ten, and then ten. Minus five is five. This is zero. And this is five. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. This is five. This is 5, so we follow the ribbon cable up through the twist over to here, and that's 5. Now we do basic addition 5 plus nothing is 5, 0 plus nothing is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, and then the answer is 0, 5, 0, 0. Remember, it's truncation, not rounding, so even though it goes all the way to here, and in this case, in this one case, wrong way, in this one case, 3 divided by 59 is 0 0.050, 0, meaning that saying 0 0.05 is accurate to what it would round up to be. Our precision actually doesn't have four digits of precision, it has three digits of precision. So if you wanted to be actually 100% in the green, you would round this five up to a one. Uh, I'm gonna get a bigger pen. You would round this five up to a one dot zero zero and your answer would be zero, would be approximately 0 0.1. However, the truncation matches, so if you want to risk it, you can say it's 0 0.05. But, like, let's go back to our other answer here. It says it's 0 0.42, but if we wanted to be more accurate, we should just say it's 0 0.4. Because... Right here. Uh, okay, hold on. It's confused. It's not alone. Right here, 33 divided by 77 is 0 0.428. And 8 rounds up. So the more accurate answer with two digits, uh, I mean, four digits of precision would, or yeah, would be 0 0.43, but because we truncate, it says 0 0.42, which means technically this is wrong until we shift it over, because 0 0.43 rounds down to 0 0.4, when you have only three digits of precision. So... So actually, this is the biggest and most accurate number that that table can display. It's not very accurate, but it gets you within the right ballpark for most two-digit division problems. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of confused myself here. Um, 
somebody smarter than me could probably remember what I thought I was trying to do. Where did my... Oh, I see. Yeah, the buffer screwed up. And then it got deleted. Okay. Um, basically, yeah. This is so complicated it made me confused. But I just walked you through approximately how to use it to get the right answer. It's... It's complicated looking, but it's actually easy. What you do is you just take this number and a version of this number, and then you take this number and you count in that number until the next one you create is going to be bigger than the version of this. And then you put how many times you counted it in here. Then you put that there. Then you take what's left over and you shift it up so that it's this version of this number's leftovers, but times 10. And then you take this number, and you count again. And you do that three times, and then you take all the bits, all the final outputs from these big circles, and you always put them here, here, and here, and then you add them. And then you take away the last one, so it's only three. Take away this one, and by rounding it up and changing this one, and then you go one, two, three, and that's your approximate answer. Yeah. Division can always go, like, look, like, uh, like this. What? Okay. Oh, I see what it's doing. It's confused. This number probably doesn't stop at 6. It probably just goes forever and ever and ever and ever, but that's not useful. Because the real world doesn't go forever and ever and ever and ever, and even if it did, it's not practical to assume people are perfect. So we generally say that this is good enough. It's close enough. Division is one of those things where mathematicians just take a deep breath and decide it's okay to not be perfect. Like, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of pi. If not, here it is. This number is not this number. And that doesn't make sense, but I'll explain it. Basically, it keeps going. After 6, there's another number. It just goes forever. Like, there is no end. It never stops. Some numbers, like... They stop there. But other numbers, like pi, they never stop. So, you just decide how close you want to be, and that's good enough, as long as you follow your own rules. And that's pretty much how to do arithmetic, and if this video made you confused, just like ask other smarter people to kind of go through it with you. And they'll probably critique me, because I'm probably wrong about some stuff, I definitely have an attitude problem. Um, and yeah, so... Yeah, they'll help you get it. Um, oh, and right, uh, the things I invented, I literally invented for this. So, this is where you can download them. It's uh, the GitHub page. These are all, like, the pictures. Let me see. Come on. That I used... Um... To download it, I know not everybody uses GitHub, but like, um, you go to the thing that says code. It says code because it's normally used by programmers. I'm just tired of linking people to my Google Docs, so I decided to put it on GitHub. You go to the thing that says code, and you go to the thing that says download zip. And it's kind of like downloading a game. And then once you get the zip, you just uncompress it go into the folder and all your pictures are there. Um, 
I'm sure you guys can figure it out. You're tech savvy. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, this is the URL. I will put this URL in the description of the video. If you're on your phone... Well, no. If you're on your phone or a computer, you'll be able to see it. But if you're on a smart TV, you're plumb out of luck, I guess. Um, but that's the general idea. This is the end of the video. I'll post it as a response to that lady who said that Gen Alpha is a bunch of crumpy idiots. And that the teachers are a bunch of ditzy nimwits. And, um... Yeah, we'll... This will be a video response to that. I mean, she's not wrong. Like, teachers... I don't want to use real names, but I had a language arts teacher who I remember better than my favorite language arts teacher for the wrong reasons. And he was so preachy, and he wanted to be our friend, and it was annoying because he was the guy who gave us homework. Dude, you're here to do a job, and we're here because it's illegal for us to stay home. Well, I mean, not me anymore. I, I'm out of that hellscape. But, um, you know what I mean. Like, it's... Stop trying to be your students' friends. And also, like, if you do want to help your students, like, for real, um, instead of only protesting your wages, because, uh, teachers don't get paid enough, that's a fact, but instead of just protesting your wages, protest your rubric. I mean... Oh my god, school isn't trying to teach kids, it's just trying to get them ready to enter the workforce. But in, like, today's day and age, there isn't gonna be a workforce. Robots are replacing people. Half of your students are probably gonna end up homeless, no offense. So why don't you just teach them to take care of themselves and be smart? Oh wait, you can't because of the rubric. So why don't you just protest the rubric until it gets updated? America is so far behind, it's depressing, dude. Alright, that's all. Bye, everybody.